Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237, come back to you with another review. And I just finished the Psycho series, so now I'm going to dive into another series. And this is my favorite horror series, by far. And this first entry is actually my fifth favorite movie of all time. <clears throat> and that is The Evil Dead. Fucking love this movie. You're probably wondering, you know, I've been doing this for a while now. I've done a bunch of horror films. Why haven't I done Evil Dead yet? Well, because I'm a, a fanboy. <clears throat> and like with the Psycho reviews, I wanted to get a shirt. And my Evil Dead 2, because that's my favorite one of the series, shirt finally came in. And also, like the Psycho shirt, my lovely girlfriend bought me this as well. Which this, she forgot she ordered but god love her so evil dead <clears throat> i mean one of the biggest cult films of all time biggest cult series of all time one of the biggest names in horror at least since the 80s <clears throat> i mean what really can be said about the evil dead i mean i've also got We've got that poster there. I have like a small 8x10 or whatever it is that was actually folded up in this. Hanging up in the bedroom. The same poster. <clears throat> Except it has that quote from Stephen King. Uh, the most ferociously original horror film of the year. I agree. Because Evil Dead is incredibly... Uh, Original. I had a hard time spitting that word out for some reason. Especially for when it came out. I mean, this came out in 1981. And at that time, I mean, slasher films. Pretty much all it was was slasher films. And <clears throat> I've sort of always considered this to be like the, the clerks of horror films. I mean, Chainsaw Massacre could also sort of be... I think this is even more low budget and culty than Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, this was filmed on ju with just under hundred thousand dollars. The first real film to be made by Sam Raimi, written directed by Sam Raimi, who of course directed all three films in the trilogy. <clears throat> he directed Dark Man, which is a superhero film that I actually haven't gotten around to seeing. I would like to. And he directed the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man trilogy. So, this guy has quite spectrum of work. And, I mean, the plot is painfully simple. A group of friends go out to this remote cabin in the woods. <clears throat> they find... Well, the story is they find a book. They read from it. And they read some sort of ancient passage... That brings forth the, you know, the, this evil entity that one by one uh, possesses them. What people forget is that this one doesn't really have the book. The book is only like two scenes. Like, they find it, they set it down, then like at the end, it has to be thrown in the fire. It's actually an old tape recorder that, you know, there was some professor... I wanted to decipher the uh, uh, of Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead. Which, if that sounds familiar, it's because Sam Raimi is a huge fan of H.P. Lovecraft. And so, you know, we just see the friends, one, you know, one by one, we will take you. Starting with the girl, Cheryl, who is the sister of the main character, Ash Williams. My favorite movie character of all time. Aside from like Batman and Joker. Ashley Joanna Williams. Played by Bruce Campbell. Is he's my favorite protagonist. Always played by Bruce Campbell. Evil Dead. Evil Dead 2. Army of Darkness. Ash vs. Evil Dead. Characters always changing. 
Like, he's sort of known for being, like, the, you know, groovy and kind of a dumbass. And this, he he's kind of an everyman. You know, he's a coward, actually. There's nothing groovy or badass or heroic about him, really. Maybe up until the end. But, you know, this movie is just all fucking charm. I mean, I love how low budget this is. And I know there's new, like, 4K restorations of this and Evil Dead 2. I, I'm not even that curious. Well, I mean, I am. I do want to see how it looks. But I'd rather, I'd rather stay like this. This is one of those movies where, like, Chainsaw Massacre. Where, you know, the low budget has the grit, the grain of the film. And, you know, the the more you restore it, the more the imperfections are going to show. Which will still add to its charm. I mean, the exterior shots of, like, the cabin. Like, the moon being covered by the clouds. You can tell that's, like... Uh, I don't know if you'd say photoshopped or, like, I'm, I'm matted on there. It's fake. But I love that. And this movie's highly inventive. I mean, I guess the what's called Dutch shots, which you know there's like a lot of a lot of angles like this, you know. Or you know, like all like or like they're they're all looking down the cellar door and the camera's like looking up at them and it pans to person to person as they speak. And even, you know, once ever the shit has hit the fan and it's just Ash all by himself for the last almost half hour. Like he's down in the cellar and hears these drips from this pipe and the pipe bursts open, covers him in blood. There's like blood rushing out of the the rock wall in the cellar out of the power outlet. And this light bulb fills up with blood, makes the room go red. Standing in front of a film projector, and there's blood dropping on the lights, so that's making everything red. The effects, I mean, it was made with like foam, latex, and duct tape. Which, yeah, it doesn't always look like the best effects. You know, like when uh, when Cheryl first falls into the cellar and Scotty's hitting her with the axe trying to get her to stay in so he can shut it. It looks like a dummy. But I love the gore effects. I mean, they're still horrific. This was actually... I don't know if it actually made the list for Video Nasties. I think it was one of the last films either tried or put on there. It didn't last long. It was taken off rather quickly. If I'm not mistaken. And, you know, and, and then you look at, like, the making of. I mean, it, it took place over a few weeks in this cabin that they found. It had no plumbing. Towards the end, it got seriously cold. So they had to, like, burn furniture to stay, stay warm. It was a crew of 13 people, including the, uh... The five cast members. So like a lot of people had to sleep in the same rooms. And tensions were high. Sam Raimi loved torturing his cast. Because if they were, you know, a, a miserable or in pain or whatever. He would just keep torturing them so that they could look, you know, scared or exhausted. Like there was one scene, I guess, where Bruce Campbell was running and he fell. He hurt his leg. So Sam Raimi found a stick and he just kept poking him with it. You also, this film also gave us, I've heard it be called like Raimi Cam or Raimi Vision and also like Demon Vision. Where it's like whenever the demon is summoned, we just see like the POV of, you know, the demonic entity like going through the, the woods and all these angles. Which, like, the last shot of the movie, I believe the camera was just placed on a bicycle. There's someone riding it, like, down the hill, then through the house, you know, right up to Ash. It's 
pretty amazing how, like, I mean, I could talk about this movie forever, but, I mean, it's one of those cult hits. Like, I literally just explained the, the plot. I mean, how do you... Uh, I think the one thing people remember the most would be tree rape, where Cheryl, for whatever reason, is more susceptible to the demons at first. So she hears a noise like Gordos. So she goes out in the woods and then she's, you know, these branches like hold her down and hold her arms down, rip her clothes off, pull her legs apart. It's kind of silly. I mean, you just see like a branch go Poo! at this awkward angle. Then she gets back inside, chased by Raimi Vision. And then like uh Ashley's girlfriend Linda and Scotty's girlfriend Shelly are, uh, you know, trying to test uh, ESP. Like Shelly's holding up a card. Linda's supposed to be guessing it. She keeps telling her it's right, even though it's wrong. Then all of a sudden, like Cheryl, who's looking out the window, is like, you know, like, uh, Eight of spades, jack of clubs, two of hearts. And then she turns around and we get that first look of, you know, these white contacts that were like thick, like glass, that didn't allow eyeballs to breathe so you can only wear for like 15 minutes. Like purple tint of the skin. And, you know, that's when they, she stabs Linda in like the Achilles tendon with a pencil. And, you, know, you just have the sound effects, too. I mean, like, there's always, like, growling or, like, this staticky screaming. Like, when Shelly gets stabbed with the dagger, it's like, Aah! for, like, ever. I keep forgetting how long that scream is. But then, you know, Shelly, like, she gets stabbed, and it's like, she vomits this, like, milk-looking shit. Her arm gets cut off, and, like, this milk-looking shit spurting out. Oh, God, it's just lots of stuff. Like, also, like when Scott, Scotty, I would say is the most annoying character because he's kind of like the goofball. He's always the one like laughing out loud, making jokes. He's like, oh, it's just a joke. Like the part where they're all looking down the cellar because they hear a noise and the camera's panning to each person. I think it's Shelly says, maybe it's an animal. He's like, an animal. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Ah, 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 ah. Jesus Christ. It's like, wow, dude. But also, like, Clerks. You know, I mean, this was made between, essentially, friends and family of Raimi and Campbell. This did start out as a short film called uh, Within the Woods, which is included on the... Uh, Ultimate Edition of Evil Dead, which I don't have, but I would love to get. Like Evil Dead's one of those movies where, even though this is the only copy I have, I would buy other copies. Like th they have the ones that's made out of like rubber. It's, it's like the Book of the Dead. Like it has pages. The discs are in there. They have that of both Evil Dead One and Two. Um. Like the ultimate edition that that has the short film, uh, because I've never seen it. I would love to see it. And you know, this movie's just so much fun. And yeah, this is the straightforward horror film of, or at least of the original trilogy. the The remake, which I also really do enjoy, is the only other straightforward horror film. Evil Dead 2 is horror comedy. Then Army of Darkness is pretty much just a straightforward comedy. And, you know, like, Linda gets possessed. And she's the one that has... Her laugh is kind of annoying. High-pitched, childish laugh. And, uh, Like, we're gonna get you. Not another peep. Time to go to sleep. But I love some of the really raw, visceral, like, 
production value. Like when Ash is trying to kill Linda outside, it's just this really crazy angle like with like the fog and the darkness and the minimal lighting like he knocks her to the ground so she's kind of rolling around on the ground but you can like barely see her down at the corner of the screen while ash is trying to run away it's kind of hard to explain but if you've seen it you know what i mean because like also when they first get to the cabin and they're sitting there having a toast and the cellar door blasts open they're all excuse me they're all like walking over to the cellar but the way the camera's kind of like shaky and like following them, it's almost, almost kind of like found footage, but not really. And like when Scotty's possessed and he gets like, uh, Ash puts his thumbs in his eyes and it's like this thick, thick, thick blood. He gets stabbed in the side and it's just like a faucet of water or blood. And as I've said in numerous uh, reviews, I am a huge sucker for stop motion animation. I love stop motion animation. Ash throws the the Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon, into the fireplace, which looks like a pile of latex. It doesn't even look like a book at this point. And when he does, I mean, that's what kills uh, Cheryl and Scotty, the ones who are left, at... I mean, they're possessed. And they just start, like, melting in stop motion. Like, like you ever see videos, like, uh, what's it called? Like, like uh, time lapse, where it's faster of, like, fruit rotting, how it almost looks stop motion. That's how it looks. Even the book has, like, a tongue of... Uh, uh, I love that shit. It, it looks low budget and poor production, but I think it looks phenomenal. I absolutely love it. And yeah, it's over the top gore. And I mean, like, when Scotty dismembers Shelly, and like her, her arms and legs and head are all over the place, and like each body part is still like twitching. It really, the only movie that comes close to this with being that low budget and really feeling like you're in this isolated place out in the middle of the pitch black woods would be like Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, which I enjoyed. I, I reviewed that as well. But yeah, Evil Dead, just an amazing, fun, great movie. It's one of those movies that I... I could just put it any time. I didn't even have to watch it for this review. I just chose to because it's fun as shit. And I fucking love this movie. Fifth favorite movie of all time. Number four would be Evil Dead 2, which of course I'm going to watch again. Because Evil Dead 2 is one of the most fun I ever have watching a movie. It is a blast every time I watch Evil Dead 2. Just, I fucking love it. But this film, you know, even with the lack of humor, which is often associated with Evil Dead, it, it still holds up as just a good horror film. And even though Ash is not really the Ash we've grown to know and love for the rest of the series, it's still Bruce Campbell, and he's still great in this. And... You know, just so much to love about this. I mean, uh, people love Sleepaway Camp because of its low budget and its, you know, sort of cheesy acting, cheesy production. It, if that's the case, that people must be head over heels obsessed with this movie because this is as low budget but great as you, like... A lot of times low budget will add charm. This is the best in that case. Case in point, this movie right here. Fucking, and... If I left anything out, it's just because... A lot of times, when I really love a movie... I just, I get so excited about certain parts... That I, I forget other shit. I mean, it happened with... I, as soon as I finished, like, my Shining, Chainsaw Massacre... And even my Psycho review... It's like, fuck, I forgot to mention that. Because I, 
I love movies, like certain movies so much that certain shit escapes me. Quick story about this. I bought this years ago. I was in high school. I saw it and I was like, yeah, that's, yeah, it's pretty good. And then, you know, a couple years later, I was hard up for money. I was going to get rid of some movies. I haven't really watched that much. This ended up in that stack. I came home and I was like, fuck, I got rid of Evil Dead. And I never got around to buying it again. So then when the remake came out, I wanted to rewatch them. And no place had them. Like, every place was sold out. But this was the exact same edition that I had. And I was lucky enough to find Evil Dead 2 with, you know, that cover. And, you know, Evil Dead was something I didn't get into first time seeing it. Like, first time I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, that was kind of a cool, unique, cabin in the woods, low-budget horror film. The Evil Dead 2, I didn't really appreciate the, the humor or even, you know, I was expecting more zombie-looking creatures, not crazy deadites. So, you know, I didn't watch them again for a while, but then um, shortly after the <clears throat> remake came out on DVD, I went back and watched them all, and that was when I really fell in love with this and fell madly in love with Evil Dead 2. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm just going to keep prattling on. It's not even about the film itself. The Evil Dead. Great, great, great fucking movie. I love it to death. Just really good. Cabin in the woods. Group of friends. Shit goes wrong. <clears throat> you know, with the little money they had, they, they made it look great. The effects, even though they're cheap, cheaply done... They still, at least the gore still looks really great. You know, Bruce Campbell is still awesome. And you get some really inventive camera work by Sam Raimi that he would carry on for at least the rest of his horror career. Until Drag Me to Hell, I don't really care for that movie. You know, crazy like, like Dutch angles or just inventive angles. Get that uh, uh, Raimi vision, the POV, going through the woods, tree rape. Love it. Can't praise this movie enough. Fucking love Evil Dead. So stay tuned, because I'm going to be doing the whole series. And so uh, uh, let me know what you think about Evil Dead. And uh, thank you for watching.